Hello everyone, uh, I hope you guys are doing well and this is it I guess as far as O-Level Math Paper 1 is concerned. I'm not going to take a lot of your time. I have my notes over here so my apologies if I'm not looking directly in the camera while I'm talking. It's just that I have to make sure that I don't miss out on anything. So I'm going to be uh, talking about three things. Number one, how to pace yourself in the exam. Number two, when to stop, when you should call it a day and stop solving questions and stop uh, solving fast papers. That's number two. And number three, what to do on exam day and what to do right after. Okay, so make sure that you watch this video to the, till the very end so that you get exactly what I have to say. So number one, that is how exactly should you pace yourself? So if you look at the time, you'll notice that you have two hours and the paper is off 80 minutes, so 80 marks. So two hours means that uh, 120 minutes. Okay, so if you... Uh, do the math. So first of all, what we do is this. We take the 20 minutes away from one hour. So that leaves us with 100 minutes. And then if you divide the 100 minutes into 80 marks equally, here's what happens. 100 divided by 80 is 1.25. That means that you have a minute and 15 seconds per mark. So that means if let's say you have a question that's of two marks, you should not spend more than two minutes and 30 seconds. If let's say a question is of Four marks, that means you should not spend more than five minutes on it, and that's it, okay? That you should not spend more than five minutes on a question that's of four marks, okay? Now, what exactly did we take the 20 minutes away for initially? So what I want you to do is, from these 20 minutes, take away five minutes and take away 15 minutes. So that means the first five minutes that you have, that I want you to take to scan the paper. Why is that important? Because a lot of times you will notice that some tricky questions are placed right in the middle of the paper, okay? And some very easy questions are hiding at the very end. So once you've scanned the paper, take a good five minutes to do that, okay? I know during these five minutes, you'll be very tempted to just pick up your pen and start solving. Don't do that, okay? What I want you to do is just take a deep breath, scan the paper, mark all the questions that you think are very easy and you can solve in a heartbeat. And once you've done that, that is, those are the questions that I want you to start from, okay? So I want you to do this for the first five minutes. The second you get the paper, this is what you need to do. Then once you're done with the paper, remember what I said, you should not spend more than a minute and 15 seconds per mark. Now, hopefully you will have 15 minutes left at the very end. And these 15 minutes are to check the paper, okay? Now, since this is paper one, that means you won't be allowed a calculator, so you gotta make sure that you don't mess up any, any calculations. And you make sure that even while you're solving, if there's something that's involved a lot of, that has taken a lot of working, then just check as you go along, rather than that I will check at the very end. Because again, you may not, you're not absolutely sure if you will have the time to do that, okay? So again, try and make sure that you pace yourself. If you find yourself getting stuck in a question, which you think is taking a lot of time, then skip it or just put it on hold, do the rest of the paper and then come back to it, okay? So that's how you need to pace yourself. Also, one thing that I didn't mention over here, but I've just realized that I should mention, and that is do a quick stationary check. Just pause this video right now, make sure that you have your pencil, scale, eraser, sharpener, compass, protractor, not your calculator, it's paper one. Okay, please don't try to sneak in a calculator. Uh, tracing paper, I made a video on tracing paper. It is allowed, but you know, make sure that whatever it is that you're doing through a tracing paper, you know an alternate method of it. Again, something I've talked about many times in, in live streams and in the rest of the videos also. Okay, so remember, remember how to pace yourself, do a quick stationary check. So these are the two things that we have talked about now. Now let's move on to the third thing and that is when to stop, okay. So remember with math, you need a fully functioning brain so that you're able to understand the questions and solve them accordingly. It's not, it's not like a history exam or a Islamiyat exam where you can just memorize everything, retain it for a couple of hours and then reproduce it in your own words and then completely forget about it, okay? Again, nothing wrong with it. I mean, I'm not trying to uh, bring those subjects down or anything, okay? But this is a completely different game altogether, okay? So you need to have a fully functioning brain so that you're able to understand the question. A lot of times, I'm sure this has happened with you also, that something doesn't click to us then, but later on when you think about it, we're like, oh, okay, that's so simple. Why didn't I think of it? Why didn't I think of it then? So that's because your brain wasn't fully functioning. And the only way that you will have a fully functioning brain is if you get enough sleep. You don't want to be sleep deprived. You don't want to be exhausted. You don't want to be tired on the exam day. You have to be mentally and physically prepared to take on the challenge, okay? It's a big step in your life, you know, attempting an O-level math. It may not seem like that later on when you grow up and everything, but at the moment, this is pretty much the top priority that you have in your life, okay? So you don't want to mess it up. You have to make sure that you're mentally and physically prepared for it. So 
make a cut off time make sure that you get at least 8 to 10 hours of sleep and it's not about the number of hours it's also about the quality of sleep so it's not that if your exam is in the evening you're like okay i'll wake up late i'll i'll sleep late and i'll wake up late no please don't do that so if your exam is in the morning then just make sure that you maximum i think that you should sleep is by 10 p.m okay not later than that and a day before the exam you should not be testing yourself too much so if you have your exam tomorrow which you do most likely so just make sure that you don't attempt a past paper because you don't want to end up in a state of panic if let's say you attempt a question and then you god forbid if you're unable to solve it it's possible you know it's it's likely that you may not be able to solve it then what if, what will happen is you'll go into a state of panic and you'll probably start questioning your own preparation so that's the last thing that you want to happen to yourself so remember by let's say today if you're watching this video and there are still a couple of hours left so if the max that i would allow you to do is just go over your notes go over the errors that you've made yes that's very important just go over just have a look at the errors that you've been making in the past and make a mental note of it so if let's say you used an identity incorrectly so just make a mental note of it okay i've made this error that means i'm very likely to do it again if let's say you made a simple calculation error if let's say you forgot to take the lcm or anything like that okay you probably get what i'm saying if just just keep an eye out of the errors that you've made and be conscious of it because if you've done it once you can do it again if you don't if you're not too conscious of it so just keep your eyes and ears open Make a mental note of all the errors that you've made and do not repeat them, okay? Now, number four, I know initially I said that I'm going to talk about three things, but uh, here's the fourth one. And that is what should you do on exam day and what should you do right after? Number one, try and stay away from, okay, now this may sound weird, but try and stay away from extremely negative people and also extremely positive people. Now, by extremely negative people, that by that I mean, you know, people who are always like, oh, I don't know, I'm failing, I don't know anything. Uh, can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? Do you know what this concept is? Do you know what to do in a question like that? Please just stay away from them, okay? You're not going to lose your friendship. Just tell them, you know, I'm, I'm exhausted myself and I'm quite nervous myself. I don't want to um, end up saying something. I, I mean, I, I don't want to misguide you or something because I'm not too sure of it myself, okay? So just excuse yourself, okay? If, if you think that friend needs genuine help, then see if you, if you can do that, okay? But try and stay away from extremely, extremely negative people. Number two, also try and stay away from extremely, extremely positive people, okay? Now, I know this may sound weird, but, you know, you'll always come across people who are, like, borderline arrogant, and they're like, okay, you know, I don't need to go over the notes, or I don't need to revise, you know, I'm 100% prepared, I'm going to get an A star. If you have such friends, if, if you have such people in your circle, then just stay away from them, okay? Just spend time with yourself, and that's it. You're not going to lose any friendships if you don't spend time with these people, okay? And once you're done with the exam, if you're feeling like extremely, extremely confident about it, only then engage in like a detailed discussion. If not, if you're if you have like the slightest bit of doubt about your exam, then do not discuss it with anyone. I repeat, do not discuss it with anyone because you're, this is not your last exam. You have exam probably day after or you have exam probably the day after or maybe maybe two days later or anything like that. OK, so do not engage in a discussion. You don't want to enter into a state where you're demotivated because you haven't done too well. God forbid. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but God forbid if that's what you, you don't want to enter into that state. OK, and also remember now just a couple of general things and that's it. There are a few things that are beyond your control. So taking too much stress about that is not going to help. In fact, if anything, it's only going to make matters worse. Number one, the threshold. I've been getting like a million questions about what the threshold is going to be. And just like that, the difficulty level of the paper. Okay, so I can right now stress as much as I want about what the threshold is going to be or what the difficulty level of the paper is going to be. But the thing is, I don't know. OK, so none of that is going to change what the outcome is. The paper has already been made. It's probably been shipped or whatever, printed, whatever. OK, and it's just waiting there for you. So me take, sitting here right now, taking a lot of stress about how difficult it is going, how difficult will it be or what the threshold is going to be is not going to change anything. OK, so focus on what you can control. That is how you can make the most of whatever time it is that you have left and um, you know whatever it is that you can't control just don't worry about it so i guess that's it um you know i don't think i have anything left to say yep just don't do anything that's out of routine don't eat anything that's out of routine don't experiment this is not the time to experiment and yeah stay sharp keep your eyes and ears open 
and once you're done with the exam do let me know at least how it goes okay so that's it i'll see you guys in the next video until then take care bye bye